Holy City Center Radio is episode 305, and I am your host, Christian Sanger. Today is Wednesday, October 23rd, 2024. We're inching closer and closer to Halloween candy and spookiness just around the corner. I hope you're having a great week so far and that you enjoyed listening to the last episode. Today, back to normal, no interview, just some updates. Uh, Don't worry, we'll make this quick and painless today. You know, I'm going to do my best to not share super uh, bummy outy, (laughs) if that's even a a phrase, it is not. Uh, Stories, uh, you know, we've got like two weeks to the election. And who knows how long after election day it's going to be before we have a result. Whatever you believe, whoever you're voting for, I don't think there's anybody who's having a good time watching this play out, stressing. It's a neck and neck race. Uh, again, I don't think there's anybody enjoying this. Uh, there are probably a lot of people ignoring it. Um, but uh, yeah, so let's see. You know, I'm going to do my best trying to find stories, but I can't always control the news. Actually, by oh, we, I can never control the news. Uh, and there's just some things that you have to share. But today, just some stuff. One is about voting, but it's good. It's good. Uh, and then we've got an update on some future plans for the Citadel Mall. So, uh, you know, we got some stuff that's, uh, you know, not not the kind of stuff we you know sometimes talk about with the crime and, you know, dysfunctional school boards and terrible politicians. So let's just, you know, continue this nice flow we've got going and relax a little bit. Without any further delay, here's the news. So we are well on our way to setting lots of records in voting, not just in this state, but perhaps nationwide as well. Uh, Early voting is underway in South Carolina. If you didn't know that, it began on Monday. Uh, You can look up where you can go uh, to vote early because not every polling place that will be open on Election Day is open for early voting. Uh, So you can go to chsvotes.gov or scvotes.gov. Uh, where you can check your registration status. It's too late now if you have become unregistered for some reason. Uh, But you can also check, number one, where your early polling place is if you want to go and get that taken care of before the actual election day. In addition to that, you can also see a sample ballot. So you may already think, yeah, I'll just show up. I know who I'm voting for for president. But you may not realize some of those down-ballot races who is running – And yeah, I know sometimes it's easy to just pick the party that you most associate with. And that's fine if that's how you want to handle it. Um, But there are some down ballot races where the party you support isn't necessarily the right person for that race. And also there are some races that uh, are, you know, they say non-political or they're not politically affiliated, meaning that the people running don't have to declare a party. School board is supposed to be one of those. Obviously, a lot has changed and. A lot of these people, especially post-pandemic, are very politically motivated. So you may want to look into you know, some of the things they've said and done and some of the endorsements out there to help you make the right decision on that. But in any event, a lot of people have already voted. In fact, a record number of ballots were cast on Monday here in South Carolina. It is the most votes uh, that the South Carolina State Election Commission Um, has seen in one day totals for early voting. Obviously, before there was early voting, everybody was voting on Election Day. But on Monday alone, uh, the Election Commission said 125,900 people cast their votes, and that destroys the one-day record for early voting. Uh, The previous record was from 2022, November 4th specifically, when uh, 70,100 ballots were cast. So, Even when there was some early voting in the pandemic, uh, you know, voting on that election, we had some early voting for midterms. That's the 2024, uh, 2022 uh, total there. Uh, 70,000 was the record and it's blown away. Now, that's to be expected. Midterms don't get as much turnout as the general elections do. uh, But uh, that's a pretty significant jump. And but no surprise, like we've been hearing that there's going to be a lot of people voting. It's a very important election, et cetera, et cetera. So. That's good news that people are engaged, even if the election doesn't go the way you want it to go. It's always good when we're seeing records being broken. Now, yes, I know these are new because early voting really wasn't a thing, especially not on this level. Um, So 
yeah, it's a little bit easier to break these records than say the national records for total votes and, and so on and so forth, but still good news that number one, we're seeing big numbers. Number two, it's early voting and we're seeing a lot of people do that, which will keep, you know, on election day, your lines will be a little bit smaller than they would have been otherwise. And also it's, it's showing that this process, people believe in it. They like it. Hey, it's nice to not just have one day to vote. Uh, if I've got some crazy, you know, you're supposed to be able to get work off. Most places allow you to, but some people find it to be too much of a hassle. Um, there's all sorts of reasons for that, of course, but it's good to have these extra options uh, for people and, and make sure that everyone who wants to have their vote counted and is eligible to vote, that it, is, that it happens, you know? So happy to see it. I'm hoping to get there. I definitely don't want to vote on election day. I just feel like even if we have a ton of people voting early, it's going to be insane uh, on that day. And I'd much rather go early. Now I have heard no surprise based on what I just was talking about. A lot of people have said there's pretty good size lines for early voting. Um, you know, people be waiting, you know, 20 minutes, I think sometimes on the lower end and it can go up from there. Now that depends on what area and what time you go. Of course, I'm sure there's someone who will respond and be like, Oh no, I was in and out in like five minutes. Uh, so, you know, you may have to wait a little bit, even if you're doing early voting, but the chances are you're going to be waiting a lot longer on election day. So I, I certainly encourage it and it's just get it done. It's over with, you don't have to worry about it or rush around on the last minute. And maybe you don't get to go and vote for whatever reason. So again, go to chsvotes.gov to find your early polling place, as well as other information, including who will be on your ballot. Uh, and if you're curious, for Charleston County, of that total of 125,900 people that voted on Monday in this state, um, there was 12,221 in Charleston County alone. So based on social media posts and things that I'm seeing, it, it seems like that trend's going to continue where we're going to have a good amount of votes might not be setting records you know every day uh but we're going to have a good chunk of people voting early and again that's a good sign regardless of which way the election goes well the citadel mall i'm sure you've made little snickering remarks about it in the past or heard some uh you know malls in general have been struggling for years now but the citadel mall has been one that has you know at times uh, you know i've just heard people make it the butt of jokes no one goes there there's nothing left in there and look some of that's true malls are struggling and i don't really know many people who go to malls period anymore and i definitely don't know a lot of people who go to the citadel mall i mean it's gotten to the point where they have tried all sorts of different things to try to bring people in there. I remember they had like basketball courts set up like in the middle, uh, you know, for like a, a tournament. And they had some other like, you know, one offs, pop ups and stuff like that. They were just like, wait, what? That's at the Citadel Mall. Um, and, and you just constantly are hearing about businesses leaving, which, again, is not entirely the fault of you know, this particular mall, a lot of these businesses, these big name brands that were around forever are, are closing stores. It's just a bigger issue that it, more people, of course, shopping online, etc. Well, Charleston's not giving up on that property and they want to make it successful. Um, and, and they're hoping to, to do so with a new mixed use development plan that's called uh, that they are calling Citadel Mall Epic Center. <laughs> yes, Citadel Mall Epic Center. It's a mouthful. I don't know what if that'll stay around, um, or really what the name entails. I know Epic is part of when MUSC uh, had a uh, opened a location in the mall. Uh, they were calling it like the Epic Center at first. I, I think it relates to some uh, software and programming that MUSC uses. I don't know why that was brought into it, but in any event, that is the current title of this project. More importantly than the name, uh, the city of Charleston wants to rework the entire property and make it into an outdoor shopping center with restaurants, entertainment, shops, and events. So, of course, that sounds a little bit more like Tanger outlets, which I do know a decent amount of people that go to Tanger for whatever reason um, and not like one of the traditional malls like Northwoods or, or Citadel. So, OK, yeah, OK, that, that makes sense to go that route. People seem to enjoy that experience at Tanger more than the traditional mall. And the fact that they're not just going to center it on the stuff that we're used to seeing in malls historically, you know, basically just shops you know, food court, and that's basically it. So the fact that they're looking at other avenues is certainly good news. Now, it all depends on what those 
pieces end up being. It sounds nice when it's broad like that, but is you, know, you still have to find the right people. Obviously, we're a ways away from that happening, but this is the beginning part of the project. The uh, city leader said the project would put an emphasis on providing shading and outdoor space. Obviously, we live in a place that is, can be very hot a lot of the year, so that makes sense. Uh, and they want to make it more pedestrian friendly so residents can spend more time at the center. So during a recent Monday night meeting, actually this Monday night that just passed, the city's design review board approved the final draft, uh, but they did add an amendment that's seeking to add more visuals to keep Charleston's character in the design. So they were hoping, you know, yeah, it's great that we want to redo it and make it look nice, but let's, you know, let's not do anything crazy and overboard. Let's make it seem like a Charleston property. So we'll see what exactly what shape that takes in the future. But that was one thing they added, like, hey, we want to make this more Charleston feeling. They also uh, need to clarify some sections that reference the city's zoning ordinances. For those who don't know, certain areas are zoned for certain types of businesses or it's zoned for residential only. Sometimes it's mixed use. So they have to make sure that anything that they're planning is zoned appropriately for that property. As for what's in there currently, I already mentioned MUSC. Uh, retailers like Belk, Dillard's, and Target uh, are all, like I said, they're all in the mall now, and they will be included in the redevelopment plan. No word on you know, Rough House Pictures, which is Danny McBride's production company. They've been in there for several years um, filming as well as uh, in the parking lot on the where the cinema is, the movie theater side. You can sometimes see the production trucks, uh, cars that they use in the production. Um, and so they've they've had a space in there. So no word yet if they're going to continue or what that would look like in the future. Now, granted, who knows by the time this actually gets approved and is moving along, if the Righteous Gemstones will still be going. It hasn't been officially confirmed for a new season beyond the one they just finished. So who knows? But so no word on them. And there's a couple other smaller businesses and um, other things that are in the mall, no real word on what will happen there. But those bigger names uh, are supposed to be part of the plan going forward. So besides adding the amendment, saying we need some more um, pictures and design options to, to make it look more like a Charleston property, uh, the next step is that the, it's, the project's going to go back to the development team uh, and then they will make a plan based on those suggestions, community feedback, et cetera, and then they'll submit it back to the city. So I'll be sure to keep you up to date um, with anything that happens with that project. But like I said, long ways to go. Who knows how this will all turn out? You know, there's still a lot of questions, but it's good that they're not just letting this property just deteriorate more than it already has. And, you know, vendors that have gone out of business or left you know, their lease, whatever the reasonings are, this could be something that at least breathes a little bit of new life into it. Um, you know, because it is in an area of town which ha obviously has a lot of people. It's close enough to some neighboring towns or areas of Charleston uh, that people would, I'm sure, like to go to if it was just something that had a few more options and was a little bit newer. So I'm happy with the idea so far. Of course, devil's in the details as always, and we'll see what happens. All right, that'll do it. Just a quickie episode. I don't want to keep you too long. It's the middle of the week. You've got stuff to do, but I really appreciate you listening so much, whether you have listened to one episode, all the episodes, if you listen to one minute or all the minutes of each episode, whatever it is, I really appreciate it. If you have a moment, please like and subscribe, rate and review this podcast, share it with someone who may want to listen. I also want to say thank you to Lindsay Marie Collins with LMC Sound System, who produces each and every one of these episodes, and Tyler Boone, whose music you hear in each and every show. Have a great rest of your week. Can't wait to be back with you on Friday. But until then, good night and good luck. <laughs>